activate Alpine Guide, three minute for a three three. And there's a battlefield, search your library for a mountain, put in the battlefield tapped, so shuffle your library, tax each combat if able, if it leaves the battlefield, attack a mountain. So it brings you from three to five and limited real nice. You go three mana, make a three three, and get your land. Next turn, go land, play five drop. Has to suicide attack. <laughs> if it ever doesn't attack doesn't suicide for a few turns, then that's kinda nice. You get to keep your land around. But when it leaves the battlefield, you have to sack your mountain. Oh, that review continues. All right, I kind of talked about Alpine Guide. The uh, the leaves the battlefield sack a mountain kind of ruins it for me, but uh, it's a nice little burst in tempo if you really care about curving into a five. Someone mentioned that it's a mountain card, so it could be a a shock land in modern. But again, the fact that you're that's three mana for a three three, and then you're losing the land means it's not going to be quite good enough. Yeah, so close to being kind of good, but not there. Fine and limited, right? Kind of. <laughs> Hopefully you don't have to suicide it into a larger creature, but at a 3-3 body, it should be able to attack for a few turns. Aria of Flame looks terrible. I'm not even going to read it. Bladeback Sliver, 2 mana for a 2-2. Two -two. Hellbent, if you have no cards in hand, Slivers you control. Deal a damage to a player or Planeswalker. Yeah, I mean, if uh, if you're playing Slivers, you're playing all of them. Borgerton Dragonheart. Three mana for a two two. Second other creature becomes a four four. Could be cool if you want to sack outlet for things anyway. The CG guys are really high on Aria. Are they? Are they? Am I missing something? Am I reading wrong? Does someone want to enlighten me? I've I've been wrong on cards before. Each opponent gains ten life. Three mana. Bam. All right. Don't want to play it. <laughs> the other ones, when you cast an instant or sorcery spell, put a verse counter on it. Then it deals damage equal to the number of verse counters on it to target player or planeswalker. So you know how many spells you have to play afterwards before you've done the fucking 10 life? Like four or something, four or five? It's a storm card. Yeah, but it's not a good storm card. Now this, I think this is worse than the um, than the two mana one that cares about the graveyard. You need to play seven or eight spells to do 30. Yeah, that's a lot of fucking spells. And you have to play this first and it costs fucking three and, and it does nothing. Great against death shadow. Yeah, <laughs> just because it can Gain your opponent's life to kill Death Shadows does not does not make it good in my mind. Yeah, I'm still not convinced. I think it looks like trash. Just respond with a trigger on the stack. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> Fuck. Hey, Oozle, thanks for the resub. Thanks for 11 months. Good with Tybalt? Oh, man. That's how you know a good card. If the words good with Tybalt come around. Yeah, no, I, I still think it's trash. Four mana for a 2-2 cleaving sliver. Sliver creatures you control get plus 2 plus 0. Oh. Cool. This is another it's another reprint. What about false cure? Yeah, we're we 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 started in a in an area where I didn't think it was playable or worth talking about, and everything I've heard someone say has not made it seem more playable or worth talking about. <laughs> the cool thing about Grape Shot is you can play it after you play uh like all of the other cards, right? So so you, you, you play your, your storm combo, and then you can find Grape Shot with the cantrips after you dig through your deck. You can gifts for it after you've already passed in flames once and, and like find the win. This is a card that you need to play before you combo, and it costs three fucking mana. <laughs> it's bad. It's a bad card. <laughs> yep, sliver, and you play all your slivers. Is this one constructed playable? Nope, it costs four. Easy to rule it out. Firebolt, uh, good card and limited. It used to be a good card in Constructed. It might be again. We'll see. Fists of Flame, two mana, draw a card until in a turn. Target creature gains trample and gains plus two, plus one, plus eight. Whoa, for each card you've drawn this turn. I skipped the Dragon Sack Outlet. Nope, I didn't. I uh, I went over it. Cool if you want a Sack Outlet. Probably probably not terrible filler. I just like went back because uh because people were still talking about some trash. <laughs> All right. Fists of Flame. Draw a card. Until end of turn, target creature gains trample and gains one plus so until elite for each card you've drawn this turn. So if you're playing this on your turn, it's getting at least plus two plus so and trample. Could be real juicy. With cycling and stuff. I don't know. Yeah, it doesn't excite me. I guess I guess any trick word that has, says draw a card on it, like the, the floor is like pretty high, right? Because worst case scenario, you're just cycling. Force of Rage, one red red. If it's not your turn, you can exile a red card and pitch cast it. You get two three ones that die at the beginning of your next upkeep. I don't think this card's good. I don't think it's good to pitch cast. I don't think it's good to play. 
it's probably not bad and limited, right? We're making two, three, one bodies at instant speed to like just block two creatures. Could get like really good value. This would be like I, I would try and play this card if uh, if I opened it in limited. But uh, I don't I don't think it's gonna be good enough for constructed now. It's like two bolts. Ah, uh, kind of. It's it's kind of worse than two bolts, right? Because your opponent can block or use a removal spell that would otherwise be dead or what have you. But you just want to play this in mono red. Yeah, you can't opponent send step it like um, other token producers. Oh shit! Oh man, righteous fury dropping gifts, dropping the gifts into the chat. Congratulations to oh, Diabolic shit. Verdict, to Corey Survived, to FG Hammer, to DZZ Vaporeon, to Arepi. Oh shit, what up? Congratulations to all you fine folks, and thanks, Righteous Fury. And thanks for your own uh, tier 2 and 31 month sub there. Oh, shit, what up? They said meant to do this at 30, but let's give some gifts. Nice. I'll drop some corns in the chat. Oh shit, what up? Appreciate that. Yeah, so uh, I guess oh, I guess shit, I don't like up? it. Um, I mean, if you could play it on time, yeah. Even in mono red, even in mono red, I don't, I don't. In modern, I don't quite see it. Geomancer is Gambit, three mana, destroy a land. Its controller may search the library for a basic land card, put in the battlefield, then shuffle their library, draw a card. So this card is obviously uh, not a great stone rain because <laughs> you're not actually stone raining, right? They're uh, your assassin's trophying a land, and then you're drawing a card. Oh shit! What up? So if you have to hit a land, it's better than assassin's trophy, assuming the three mana isn't too slow. But uh, it's a little, a little too narrow. Doesn't actually hinder the opponent. Not good for Ponza. Now, if you want to curve lead an arbiter into this, right? You want to curve lead an arbiter into this. That's a little bit different. Hey, Pan Timmer Day. Thanks for the resub. Thanks for the three months. And Dissenting Clown. Thanks for sharing the prime. Appreciate it. And Spoopy Snack. Thanks for the resub. Thanks for the 27 months. Spoopy says, only resubbing for Goat Nap. Well, that's good, because here we are at Goat Nap. Three mana. Gain control of target creature until end of turn. Untap that creature. Gains haste. That creature is a goat. It also gets plus three plus so until end of turn, which is glorious. Because there's so much uh, shape shifting in this set that you're actually. There's actually a reasonable chance <laughs> to grab a goat. There's actually a reasonable chance for that to matter. That's fantastic. Delightful little limited trick there. Goblin Champion, one mana for no one, haste exalted. So, uh, so Goblin Rager is a 1 1 with haste. And uh, this attacks a little bit better on turn one, right? You got a, you're gonna have a one two. Other than that, I don't, I don't know if this card's good enough for constructed. Sometimes, sometimes some really bad cards see play in constructed just because they've got like a tribal th thing going in the synergy, and like you just need cards to fill the slot. I, I don't think, I don't think it's there. I don't think goblins is there. So they need to play this this card. I think they have better options in modern. Even with the haste attached. Probably not great and limited either, huh? Goblin Engineer. I think this card's great. Two mana, one, two. When it enters the battlefield, you can entomb for an artifact. And then one red to sack an artifact. Written return an artifact card from your... One red tap it, sack an artifact. Oh, shit. Um, swap an artifact card with convert mana cost three or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. So you're trash for treasuring for an artifact that costs three or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. But it costs one red and there's a tap. So the, the recursion on here is weaker than what we've seen with uh, with Goblin Welder. It costs two mana, which is more than Goblin Welder. But Goblin Welder doesn't entomb an artifact into your graveyard. And the artifact doesn't have to cost uh, three or less. The ability only impacts three or less. But the artifact that you're entombing is better than that. So I think it's a pretty exciting effect. Not just for modern, but for legacy as well. I've already done a little bit of brewing around it. And I can't wait to try it out, test it out. And I'm going to play the shit out of this card. Hey, Crossfire Killer, 1833. Thanks for the resub. It's the 15 months. Did I forget he's a 1-2? Oh, I probably forgot that. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think that matters very much. Goblin Matron. Finally getting Goblin Matron in modern. Love it. 
Goblin or a flame. Yeah, I remember this card. This card saw constructed play like way back when, right? I mean, it's not going to now, obviously, but uh, way back in the day. I think it's like a nostalgia reprint slash uh, way to way to go wide in a in this limited format. Like if you have Goblin War Party, you're making a bunch of tokens. Four mana, make three one one red Goblin creature tokens, or you can pump your team. It's going wide and twine. It was Orcish or a flame. Oh, that's what I'm thinking of. Well, what does that fucking card do? How close are they? Two mana when attacking. All of your attacking creatures get plus one plus out. Oh. Okay, so it's not. It's not. A, it's not a reprint. Reprint, but it's like a functional reprint. Sweet. <laughs> yeah, I shorthand like that a lot. But I guess people that play commander and stuff care about care about that. If there's like a functional reprint of a card, it's better for them. Used to cost four. This alpha edition looks like it costs two. Oh, it was a typo. It actually costs four. Okay, well, silly me. Silly me. I was super wrong. Ignore me. That's fine. And now we get then, so like the alpha the edition was a typo. Now they're like going back. We're like going back to print the, the typoed card. That's kind of fun. A neat little bit of history. Tweak on history there. That's the meme. Yeah. Well, now I'm there. Now I'm there with you. It took me a minute. Hollywood Sliver, three mana for a 2 2. Sliver creatures you control have reverse loot. They have rummage. That's a sweet little ability. Yeah, if I'm drafting slivers, that's very exciting to me because then you can turn through everything that's not a sliver and play more slivers. Yeah, I like it. Unless this one's a misprint too. Yeah, they're going to come out and they're like, yeah, this one was supposed to cost four. Sorry, everybody. <laughs> I'm change it. Also, the unearth sliver. Yeah, I guess. I don't want to like loot away my slivers to re to unearth them, unless it's setting up a lethal turn, though. But you could do that. You could do that. Do I think slivers will be playable? Uh, I think slivers were vaguely playable before, and the we're getting a couple juicy ones uh, that'll probably make slivers playable. Yeah, I don't know if this one she sees playing constructed. It's kind of borderline. Usually, three three minute cards are are real hard in that deck. But the ability is sweet. It wouldn't be crazy to me. Igneous Elemental, six mana for a four three. Costs two less if there's a land card in your graveyard. So you're pretty much only playing this for four if you have like some cycling lands, which are common, so not the not crazy to get them. I think if you have like two or three cycling lands in your deck, this card gets a lot better. When it's just a battlefield deals two damage to a creature. Uh yeah. So I wouldn't pack one pick one it, but if I already had a few cycling lands, I would probably take it over other filler for sure. They're uncommon. Okay. Well, fair enough. Lava Dart is a card that I have played in Legacy recently. It was pretty bad. I was playing it to recur Phoenixes. People might play it as a one of to recur Phoenixes in Modern. Get two spells out of it. For one mana. Not too shabby. Or a free spell from your graveyard. Magmatic Sinkhole. Six mana. Deals five damage to target player or planeswalker with delve. I saw people, I don't know, I, I didn't get it. I saw a lot of people being like, oh my God, I'm gonna play this fucking card. I'm just like, really, <laughs> are, are you? <laughs> I was I was less excited than everyone else I saw talking about it. Nice angler, I guess, I guess. We already have cards that kill angler that don't have fucking six in their casting cost with delve. Can you just play your own goddamn angler? Oh, you think people are excited about Popper? The people I saw talking about it were talking about it in in, uh, in modern. And I was like, that's doesn't make any sense to me. What cost does it need to be for worth? A little bit less than this. I I just don't think yeah. Like people were talking about like playing it in uh in like blue red phoenix and stuff. And in blue red phoenix, like you already have the. The Submerge card in blue, which is probably better than this because it can hit relevant permanents. Like in Staring Bridge, it'll let you attack for lethal or whatever. Or uh, or White Ley Lines, you can bolt out your opponent, stuff like that. Murderous Cover exists. Yeah, yeah, but we should be comparing it to like other, other red cards, right? And so I like, saw people being like, oh, okay, well, I can't wait to like not play Lightning Axe. But that's not really why you're playing Lightning Axe. You're playing Lightning Axe because it's another discard outlet. And this is... I don't know. I don't think it's very good in Phoenix.
nice with Fire Blast and Popper. Oh, you're going to play this in Burn? I don't think you can afford to play something that doesn't damage your opponent in Burn. Yeah, it doesn't even... I mean, if it hit players. Oh, if this hit players? If this card hit players, I, I, would, I, I would be jizzing my pants about it. But right now, I'm just like, why are other people jizzing their pants? It's weird. This is public. This is a, this is a fucking library. Change your pants. All right, Orcish Hellraiser, two mana for a 3-2 with Echo 1. When it dies, it deals two damage to a player or Planeswalker. I love this shit. I love it. Um, I played Gitu Fireslinger to, to, to top eight the first extended um, PTQ I ever played in. And I, I was playing Gitu Fireslinger, which was not a Greek card. <laughs> but I played it in a deck with Cabal Therapy and just for, like, sack fodder. So I could, like, get value out of my, out of my sacrifices. Um, and... It was uh, it was good. It fit the it fit the deck. This is like a like a way fucking better version of that. <laughs> it's, it was just so much better. Yeah, it wouldn't be crazy if I worked this into some weird sack deck. I mean, carrying feeders legal, right? Carrying feeders legal. It goes into popper black red tortured existence. Yeah, that sounds correct. That sounds super fucking correct. Keldon Marauders has seen Popper play, and this is better. Keldon Marauders has seen Legacy play. Not any time recently, but Legacy Burn used to play Keldon Marauders. Or Scale Guardian. And Lanzer, you can watch the VOD start, start at the beginning where we go over white cards. So they're asking me about cards like, whatever. you know, there's more people here than just you, right? <laughs> Gotta love the people coming in and asking about an individual card. My time has value! Jesus. Marauders are really good, though. Marauders are really good. I mean, I think this Hellraiser card is uh, is good. Maybe not good enough for, um, like, Modern Burn or Legacy Burn or whatever, but... Uh, yeah, it could be sweet. Any deck, any deck that wants to sack things anyway, it starts to look real juicy. Or scale Guardian. Seven mana, 4-4. Four, four, costs one less... For each lane card in your graveyard, flying haste. Yeah, um, this is another card's like, yeah, it'll be sweet and limited if you can, you know, get the lands in your graveyard. It's a little bit pricey otherwise. Seven mana. Seven mana is a lot, even in even in limited. But uh but if you're paying six mana, if you're paying five mana, starts to starts to look like a pretty great limited card. Patch like Mun, three mana for a two two. When it or another goblin you control dies, it deals one damage to any target. That's pretty juicy. That's pretty juicy. It does work with the the four mana one one that spits out two creatures, and then it's a free sack outlet for goblins. So if you're gonna play that alongside Mons here, uh, you get to start throwing damage willy nilly, clearing through creatures for four, four mana. You can sack a goblin to get two more one one red goblin creature tokens. Oh, My experience shit, with up? goblins is that it's like pretty hard to have that extra four mana. It's pretty hard to have that be better than doing something else. Goblins really runs out of gas, right? You can always chain matrons or something. There's so many good three drop goblins. Yep, I mean this one is legendary, so maybe maybe you just want to tutor for it when you already have a board of goblins and a sack effect or something. Maybe. Hey, skip dash. Thanks for the resub. Thanks for the three months. Skip says looking looks good and limited. Kappa. Yeah, right. Prospector. Yeah, I guess. I guess. It's a. Uh, I guess if you're playing this card. Maybe you should just be playing uh, Judith, right? Maybe you should just be playing Red Black and playing Judith. Because that card is so much more powerful, right? Or Judith doesn't trigger off of Goblin to uh, off of tokens. Maybe that's like the one thing. Because the Anthem effect on Judith is like way better than everything else that this card does. But yeah, it's only triggering off of non-tokens. Whereas this card triggers off of tokens. So if you're playing goblin tokens specifically, this would be better. But like any other kind of goblin deck, Judith is just way better. You can't tutor for Judith. Yeah. It's it's just such a more powerful card, right? With the plus one plus oh. Pillage. I saw a lot of people excited about Pillage. For a long time, it was like, why doesn't that fucking card exist in modern? So it's kind of cool that it exists in modern now. Are we going to play four more Stone Rains in Ponza? Probably not. I think Molten Rain's still better. Maybe not in Ponza. Maybe Pillage is better in Ponza, having the versatility. 
anyway, we'll see. It's not like drop your pants exciting, but it will certainly see some amount of play somewhere because people play Stone Rain in this format. Plane Bound Accomplice. Three mana for a 1 3. One red, you can put a Planeswalker card from your hand onto the battlefield, sacrificing it at the next end step. So it's a sneak attack for walkers, which is pretty exciting. Um, I saw I saw people tweeting about how it is a uh, combo with Cloudstone Curio. <laughs> you get Cloudstone Curio, Curio down, and then you sneak in uh, Chandra, either the four mana one or the six mana one that produces double red, and then you uh, you generate double red, and then you use that mana to sneak in another Walker. It doesn't matter what, and the Cloudstone Curio bounces that Walker, <laughs> bounces uh bounces the the Chandra back to your hand, and then you activate the new Walker and. And you just loop them, and and uh, and you have infinite Walker activations. Whatever you're looping with the Chandra. If it's another Chandra, you have infinite damage there. Oh, I guess that doesn't work because another Chandra would die as, as a state-based effect. You wouldn't be able to. The Curio wouldn't be able to trigger. Curio triggers on enters play, right? Not cast. Let me see. I guess this matters kind of. But the cool thing about the combo is you could just like fill your deck up with Planeswalkers that are hypothetically not terrible anyway. With a card that already works with Planeswalkers. And so the only really dead card would be the Curio. Yeah, not in fact, permanent comes into play. So it wouldn't work with two of the same Walker. It'd have to be two different Walkers, but it's still pretty juicy. Shit, what up? Hey, Tagler52. Thanks for the sub. Thanks for the four months. Yeah, there's multiple Walkers that work with it. The best one being the, the four mana Chandra, obviously. Koth. Oh, yeah, sneaking Koth, down tick Koth. That's way more mana. A sweet idea. Koth in the loop also like lets you animate all of your mountains too, which might be good enough to win. Garrick works. Oh, four mana Garrick just to like untap two lands. Yes, yes. And Garrick also like generates infinite three threes on the other side of the. Oh, I chose a uh, slug Kenix I as best flavor text. Yeah, so there's a lot of there's a lot of planeswalkers that would give you infinite mana there. Yeah, so I don't think the Accomplice would be that bad in that deck because you're like filling your deck full of all these Planeswalkers. So even if you don't have the Curio, you can still get value that way. Uh, the Curio itself is bad unless you have the combo, but the Walkers are hyp hypothetically castable. It could be a reasonable, could be a reasonable pile. Pyrophobia, two mana, deals three damage to a creature. Cowards can't block this turn. I hate this. I hate fire. I hate you for talking me into this root. Anyway, Norn the Wary. Coward Extraordinary. Quickfoot Cyclops. Five mana for a 4-4. Four, four. And there's a battlefield up to two cards. <clears throat> Obviously, two mana to deal three damage to a creature is good and limited. And it's not priced to be a constructed card. Changelings do count as cowards. That is absolutely correct. Which makes that matter a little bit more, but like... Most of the time you're playing this card, you're doing it to just to kill a creature. And that's perfectly fine. Perfectly good limited card. If the cowards can't block this turn comes up, that's cool, but it's mostly just killing stuff. Great removal spell. Quakefoot Cyclops. Five mana for a 4-4. Four, four. When it enters the battlefield, up to two card target creatures can't block this turn with cycling. When you cycle it, target creature can't block this turn. Yeah, not too shabby. The top end of a um, aggressive curve. Get in that damage. Love it. Ravenous Giant, four mana for a 5-5. Five, five. The beat of your upkeep, it deals a damage to you. Throwback to Juzum, huh? Mm. That's a that's a mighty pile of beef right there. I don't think it'd be crazy to first pick this card in this format. I think that was a really good limited stance. Reckless Charge, one mana. Target creature gets plus three plus slow and gets haste until end of turn with flashback. Yeah, there's some graveyard effects that matter in this format. Um, needs trample. Oh man, every card needs trample. To be clear, I don't think Giant's a, a constructed playable. Reckless Charge. Let's see. Reckless Charge is a card that uh, did it see constructed play the last time it was in Standard. I'm trying to remember. It's a really efficient card, and you do get that flashback value. If you ever get six damage out of it, you feel pretty good. A lot of times you're getting more than six damage because of the haste factor. Oh shit, what up? Hey, Unfamiliar Patterns, thanks for the sub. I remember 
it saw a little bit of play until blue green madness took over yeah that that sounds about right that sounds about right i remember it was okay the last time they printed it in a master set it was like fine you probably won't see play in modern unless there's like some weird combo and just like an absolute need to give something haste and this being the best value way to do it or maybe you want to do it from your graveyard it's okay and limited it's fine you want to be like pretty aggressive to play it you probably don't want multiples Seasoned Pyromancer. One red red for a 2-2. When it enters the battlefield, discard two cards. Then draw two cards. Reach an online card. Discard it this way. Get a 1-1 red elemental creature token. So if it was just cards, if you got a 1-1 for just for each card, so if like if you're flooded and you discard two cards and draw two and get two 1-1s, I think that'd be a pretty good three mana 2-2. Two -two. But it says non-land. I don't know. I guess Mardu is a deck where like if you're looting away two lands because you're flooded then you don't really care if you're getting 1-1s. One Whereas if you like are looting away to hit lands, if you're like binning Lingering Souls, then that could be okay. I don't think you would play very many, though. You'd play like two of these. Three is a lot of mana. There's a lot of competition for at the three-drop slot right now, too. Some people, some people would play in like Kaya and stuff. And then the five mana value from your graveyard is pretty sweet. You draw even if you don't discard. No, 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 no. You, uh, you will always discard two cards, and then you draw two cards. The only if is for each non-land card discarded this way, you get a one-one. So if you discard two, so if you loot two lands away, you're not getting any one ones. You just have a three mana two two. Oh, if you're empty, if you're empty-handed. Oh, that's true. That's true. Kind of similar to the two mana two two in standard. Yeah, you'll still draw your two cards. You think it's really strong? Hmm. I think this is the sort of card that I would have to like play before I like really knew if it was like like you said really strong. There are other uh, three mana two twos that see play in modern though, aren't there? Look at those pecs and abs. It has to be really strong. <laughs> This Pyromancer works out. Imagine it like Bedlam Reveler. Hmm. I mean, it's not Bedlam Reveler. <laughs> you're playing. I'm, you're getting an extra card off of Bedlam Reveler for one. For two, the three four body with uh, with prowess. Helps you convert those extra cards into a win. Like that's a that's a really reasonable body. If you're not discarding anything, you're not getting any one ones. So you just have a three mana two two. It's not uh not the same level. Pretty clearly. I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying, but uh, but no. <laughs> well, it's not on the same level. It is nice that it doesn't care about graveyard though. So if your opponent leylines you, it still works. Multiple revelers get bad. Eh, only if they're locked in your hand, right? Otherwise, you just discard them and draw three. Not a big deal. You also can't play Bedlam on three. Yeah, I don't. But but like when you're when you're not playing Bedlam on three, I mean one for one you can right with uh with faithless lootings and stuff. I've certainly played Bedlam Reveler on, on turn three a plenty of times. But um But when you're when you're playing your spells, you're you're disrupting the opponent. When you're like when you're not playing Bedlam Reveler, every spell spell you play that turns on Bedlam Reveler is also just like slowing down the game, disrupting the opponent, like playing well towards that. Season Pyromancer doesn't really work towards that. I'm worried that it would be a uh, three mana faithless looting too often that the body wouldn't matter enough too often it's cool that the that it gets a uh, value out of the graveyard though i'm certainly willing to give it a shot I'm certainly willing to, to give it a shot right now though i don't think this looks like a card that i would want to play four of like you're like you're playing a deck where you're already considering cutting your um, 
your your fucking cake mans right now because there's so many good three drops. And now you're trying to fit another one in. How bad is a three mana faithless looting with bodies? I mean, but it's not necessarily making bodies, right? It's making bodies if you're discarding non-land cards. So there's situational bodies. A three mana faithless looting with a two two attached would not be playable on its own. If that's if that's the card that you have, three mana two two, faithless looting. Obviously, this card is better than that. Like sometimes you're making two one ones. Uh, sometimes it's not a faithless looting; it's just a draw two. And sometimes you're getting graveyard value. Obviously, this is more than that. But the worst case scenario for this card is unplayable. Is my hesitancy. That's why I'm not talk not calling it busted. But I uh, I certainly see all your points. I certainly see the situations where it's quite good as well. Faithless rummaging. Oh, that's also true. That you're like discarding the two first, which I mean is also a perk when you're hellbent later. But anyway, discarding phoenixes. Yeah, yeah, I guess. Usually you want to be like triggering your phoenixes by turn three. But I have played phoenix in Mardu before, and phoenix is pretty decent in Mardu. This probably would be another way of binning it. The cool thing about Phoenix and Mardu is that you're also playing Collective Brutality. And so that's you just have like a reasonable number of ways of, of pitching it. Brutality is just like another reasonable card in that deck. I think this card's worse than Collective Brutality. But anyway, shenanigans. One in a red. Well, let's move on. Let's move on. We've stayed here. I could talk about Mardu for forever. I can like hem and haw over various cards for forever. And a lot of people, uh, I, I don't necessarily agree with some people on like how, how Mardu should be like built and constructed. Like some people pull, some people like main deck four mana walkers in that deck, and like play basic planes and stuff. So, uh, there's certainly certainly different uh, different ways to go about it. Anyway, shenanigans one into red, destroy an artifact, dredge one. <laughs> oh man, so you can dredge back your shatter. That's kind of cool. This isn't a bit better than ancient grudge in dredge, right? I don't think so. He gets around cage. Yeah. That's valid. That's valid. So you could play like one of these and like two ancient grudges, two or three ancient grudges. Just like split it up so you don't get host by cage. Anyway, Spinehorn Minotaur. Three mana for a two three. As long as you've drawn two or more cards this turn, it has double strike. Yeah, really easy to turn on any draw spell or cycle or whatever. It's gonna give it double strike on your turn. Cycling lands is kind of cool because then you're like getting double strike mid combat or whatever, or the or the the trick that uh, gives it plus one plus zero oh, and trample for each card you've drawn. That's like a two card limited combo by itself, right? You play that combat trick on this, and then you're hitting for eight damage on turn four. Not too shabby. You play two of those, you play two of those, and then you've drawn three for the second one, and so that's five, seven, fourteen damage, fourteen damage trample on turn four. It's kind of zesty. They're all commons too, right? Isn't that pump spell a common? Cool. Spiteful Sliver. Three mana for a 2-2. Two, two. Sliver creatures you control have whenever this creature is dealt damage. Deals that much damage to target player or planeswalker. Noice. Yeah, if this was... You could deal it to like any target. It'd be pretty great. And would, uh, it would actually kind of push Slivers in modern. Uh, I think this is still pretty good. Maybe Constructed Worthy. Something, something blasphemous act. Oh, come on. <laughs> oh, man. It is good against cards like Anger the Gods, though, right? Anti-Pyroclasm tank. Yeah. Anti-Death Shadow. Yeah, pretty hard to attack through some slivers as the Death Shadow player. Unless it kills the opponent. Tonic Reformation, one in red. Each land card in your hand has cycling red, cycling two, and then it cycles itself. Oh, that's kind of cool. Yeah, that card seems sweet to me. There's a few different uh, cycling payoffs in the format. There's also uh, land in your graveyard payoffs in this format. And there's cards that trigger for the amount of times you've drawn on the turn. So, yeah, this card probably works, huh? Probably just works. I don't know if you pack one and pick one in. I don't know if it's fast enough for draft on the regular. But probably, I probably would. Oh. 
seems hilarious with legacy lands. Tectonic Reformation? Hmm. I don't think they get enough red mana, do they? I don't think lands gets enough red mana to like really abuse that. I don't. I don't. I don't think you can play this in in uh in legacy lands. The the slots in legacy lands are so tight. They're so very tight. It, it might be funny though. Yeah, I could maybe see first pick, first picking it as well. It might be too slow, but there's a lot of synergies with it. And obviously, you're always going to play it in sealed. Is there any constructed applications for this? Oh, that's kind of what we're talking about. We're talking about legacy lands a little bit, but I don't see it there. Do I see this anywhere? Hmm. The deck would have to produce a lot of red. I mean, seismic assault decks are already trying to do that, but probably not. <laughs> probably just not, right? You probably just want your cycling lands to cycle and don't want to invest an entire another card. On giving cycling to other lands. Throws of Chaos. Four mana. Cascade. Retrace. Nice set of abilities. Pretty sweet. Uh, could actually be a combo card, right? I don't know if you play this card in Living End. I've seen them play Bloodbraid Elf. But you play this card in Living End, and then they like play a sweeper. They like Supreme Verdict your board or whatever. Then you could retrace it and get your board back. You play this in a limited sliver deck. Throws of Chaos? I mean, I think you'd play Throws of Chaos in a lot of decks. Just to like not run out of not run out of juice. Assuming you had enough three drops. Does Living End play some 3-drops? They can. They can also just, like, have nothing but Cascaders. Also, I think if they hit their 3-drops, they probably don't care that much, right? Like, if you hit a Beast Within with this, you can still combo off the next turn. You want to play this in Jund? I don't think I want to play this in Jund. I don't think this card's better than Bloodbraid Elf in that deck. Cascade is a cast trigger. It is when you cast a spell. I don't think that matters. Steamkin and Experimental Frenzy would love this guy. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. I don't know. Four mana. I guess you get two spells, so a Steamkin would be pretty decent. Here's his Rage. Uh, sweet uh, limited card. Used to see Constructed play. Will not see Constructed play now. It's too slow, too derfy. Cool that it's around, I guess. Vengeful Devil, two minute for a one with haste, and then morbid it ping something. Only if a creature died this turn, you get to ping. Oh shit, what up? That's so efficient. That's so efficient that if like your deck's turning on morbid consistently, like in a red black sacrifice deck or something, then uh, this card's gonna be a lot better than you might think. Probably just unlimited though. Atomic Goodbye, thanks for the resell, next 18 months. Vision New Sand Sprinter, four minute for a four one trample haste. At the beginning of the end, end step, return it to its owner's hand, and then you can cycle it. Kind of a cool little card. You can get in some damage with it when the opponent's tapped out and they play a blocker and you're like, all right, whatever, cycle this. Volatile claw Claws. Three mana until end of turn. Creatures you control get plus two plus oh and gain all creature types. Neato. All right.